All right, so this week we have a lot of information coming in a short amount of time. So hopefully you stick with us to the end and get all of this information to win your IDP leagues. Um, you know, so we're going to talk about the injuries and also injuries as they are affecting snap counts uh, in the, on the defense of a lot of teams. Um, but before we get into that, uh, this episode, this this video is sponsored by IDP Plus. Get more in depth topics covering IDP dynasty football and NFL betting. Subscribe today to the YouTube channels IDP Plus Fantasy, IDP Plus Betting, and IDP Plus Shorts. With that, let's get into it. Uh, as always, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at Nate Sheet, and Ricky is back from his trip. He is Ricky Rod 66. Uh, Ricky, with that, let's jump right into IDP injuries. Um, kicking off in the uh, defensive end edge uh, position, let's talk about Joey Bosa. What's going on with him right now? What's not going on with him? If, if we're talking about Joey Boza, you can expect we're talking about injuries. He makes a great play, and then all of a sudden, um, he's got some sort of injury. We've talked that we talked about that back in week one, and sure enough, he's hurt again. Tuli Tulio Popo. <laughs> Tuli Tulio Popo. No, okay, I didn't say that right again. Tuli T. You can look him up, okay? <laughs> and uh, he is the man to target as the replacement for Boza. If Boza is out. We don't have any updates as of yet. I expect Bozo with his injury history to be out. Tulu will be the man to pick up. And a lot of people dropped him after the first couple of weeks. He might be out on the waiver wire. Grab him. Not Bud Dupree. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so Alex Highsmith was out, uh, which opened up some uh, big plays for, for his replacement. What's going on there? So Alex Highsmith, it was announced on Tuesday that he'll be out two to three weeks. With that, Nick Herbig, who has – uh, looked really good in limited playing time and was also had some great success when he came in here in relief for Highsmith during week three. Herbig is the man, and with Wild on the opposite side drawing so much attention, in addition to Herbig being very, very, very skilled with an active motor, um, having Watt taken away some of that uh, attention to him, Herbig could be a good play on the edge. All right. Uh, talking about the Browns now and Miles Garrett, uh, looks like he's got a foot injury. What, what's the latest on that? He's got apparently two two injured feet, one of which is worse than the other one. He's going to try and play through it, but I wouldn't be surprised as the year progresses if Garrett misses a couple of games or so. And if the Browns fall out of contention, he could be out. Actually, they might shut him down as the year progresses to take care of those feet. He's too valuable of a, of a commodity for them. So with that, Alex Wright for run defense, Ogbo Okorokwanko. Boy, I'm getting the tough names today, aren't I? Um, but he's in there more for the pass rush side of things at all. Not really one replacement for him. If I'm in a redraft type of league, I am looking to trade Miles Garrett before this goes downhill. Um, I just have a bad feeling about this one. And I don't think either the two that I mentioned, Ogbo or Alex Wright, are two that are worth picking up and playing. Gotcha. So uh, looking at Detroit, a lot of injuries there. Uh, one on the uh, the edge here is uh, Marcus Davenport with an elbow. Um, who's his replacement? What's going on there? Marcus Davenport, it was announced on Tuesday, is going to miss the entire year with an elbow injury. Uh, sort of like Joey Boza, two very, very talented folks that just cannot stay healthy. Josh Pascal is going to take his place. He doesn't have nearly the pass rushing juice despite his Fairly high draft pedigree. Um, Josh Pascal came out of Kentucky. So uh, Pascal's the replacement if you're desperate, but he may, he'll get a sack here and there, but not someone you're going to put into your lineups. Gotcha. All right. Uh, let's talk finally uh, in this position group. You know, probably one of the number one guys, uh, Max Crosby, uh, leaving with a high ankle sprain last week. 
Yeah, Max, Max Crosby, it's actually rumored that it was at the near the very, very end of week two that he had a high ankle sprain, though it wasn't talked about very much. Clearly, he didn't have the production in week three that we typically, typically expect for him. And so he, he, he will gut it out, but he didn't play 100% of the snaps even this past week. Now, the game became a little bit of a blowout as well. But even with that, typically in the past, he's played a lot. It's a really bad sign for him. Keep an eye on it. But high ankle sprains, we saw this with Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler, uh, from a running back perspective, he came back, just wasn't himself. Everybody thought he was washed up, et cetera. He looked really explosive in the first three weeks because his ankle was finally healed. This thing could linger with Crosby all year. Another one that I'm thinking very hard, similar to Miles Garrett, about trading high before this gets a little bit worse because if they don't sit him out, this thing just won't heal and he won't have the production he typically has. All right, now let's uh, switch positions to defensive tackles. We have a couple here. Uh, the first one, Javon Hargrave uh, has having an issue, issue with his tricep. What's the information there? The information looks like he is going to be out for the year. Uh, the pass rushing spell, specialist, a big free agent signing from San Francisco, uh, I mean, by, for San Francisco a couple years ago, it looks like he will be out for the year. San Francisco in general is having all kind of injury problems and all. This is going to be a rough rest of the year for them, I have a feeling. Jordan Elliott is the one who got the uh, playing time once Hargrave left, but he's not nearly the player that Hargrave was. There's a reason the Browns were more than happy to let Elliott leave in free agency. Um, this is something to avoid as well. Gotcha. All right. And back into Detroit with the injury issues. But uh, I saw the play with Ali McNeil on the on the ground. Um, what's what's the latest there? The latest is he's got a shoulder issue. He's not supposed to be out for the full year, but they do expect him to miss a little bit of time. DJ Reader, who's coming back from injury and actually missed week one, played about 40% of the snaps, which nose tackles typically play. So Reader will be playing one of the defensive tackle spots. And next to him, Levi Onwuza Ricky, another <laughs> fun name to say today, folks. Uh, so Le uh, Levi will be starting next to him. Now, Levi had a fantastic preseason as well. And what's interesting about that is he was a second round draft pick, high second round pick, very well thought of coming out of college. He's had back injuries and back problems. He's finally over that. And maybe even with this additional playing time, he could be a sneaky defensive tackle. So if there's someone on the end of my IDP bench in a deeper league, he's one I'm looking at, actually. If you can spell his name and find it in the ad drops. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's now shift gears over to linebackers and kind of right off the top here. Let's talk about the situation with Junior Colson. Junior Colson missed last week, and there's a chance he's going to miss this week as well. But what it's meant, though, is, is that means that uh, Dayon Henley played 100% of the snaps. Perriman played roughly 80% of the snaps or so. And so Henley, Henley is the man to target. And what this is potentially also saying that as Colson gets healthy, we may see Perryman slip out and Colson slip into that role. Um, and as the year progresses and uh, the Chargers fall out of the race, you'll see Colson playing even more. So Colson, someone, you could probably get him pretty cheap right now. He might even be on your waivers. It's the stash for later in the year. Gotcha. All right. Um, now let's shift focus over to Micah McFadden and what's going on with his back. So Micah McFadden, uh, they, of course, they play Thursday night now, the Giants do against the Cowboys. He got in a limited practice on Tuesday, that which is a good sign. They expect him to play. Darius Muasau picked up a couple of snaps. There you go. Another tough name, Muasau. What is that with, with these players today? But Muasau would be the one to play if McFadden sits out. Now, you probably have to be in a really deep league to play Muasau on a Thursday night, but he would be the person. But right now, McFadden looks like he will play. All right. Um, now, tell me a bit about Jerome Baker and, and what's going on there. Jerome Baker missed week three at this point in time early in the week here. Uh, no clear word in terms of will he play in week four. Tyrese Knight played in his stead, but also Drake Thomas got some snaps in there. Drake Thomas had some tackling issues. Tyrese Knight has struggled in coverage. This other linebacker position, if Baker doesn't play, is not worth touching at all, period. End of story. Next. 
All right. Well, next on the list here we got is David Long Jr. Um, dealing with a quad issue. What was interesting about David Long, when I looked at the box score and his stats and all, I was like, holy cow, this hamstring injury that he had must have happened in the first quarter. But I looked and he actually played into the fourth quarter and played a significant percent of the snaps. So it was just a totally unproductive day that he had. So um, I wouldn't write him off because of that. But if he's unable to play, Anthony Walker is the person that stepped in for him. And actually, Anthony Walker wore the green dot while Long was out. So if Long is out, Anthony, and you need a one-week fill-in, Anthony Walker might be someone that's worth picking up. There we go. Um, all right. Uh, Ivan Pace out. Uh, we saw a big day from Camus Grugier Hill. So tell us a little bit more about what's going on there. So Pace was ruled out before week three, which was nice to know in advance. Kamu Grugier-Hill stepped in for him. A lot of people picked up Brian Asamoah last minute. Um, and, uh, and I wish I would have been there to tell him it's not going to be Asamoah. It's going to be Grugier-Hill. But Grugier-Hill, while he had some productivity, only played about 31% of the snaps. So if Pace is out again, you can't bank on a linebacker being extra productive with 31% of the snaps. So stay away from all Vikings linebackers. Pace is extremely productive with limited snaps when he's been playing about 60, 70%. Not everybody's like that. Pace is even a risk if he does play. Stay away from that second linebacker position with the Vikings. Gotcha. Okay. So let's talk about the safety position here. Um, and, you know, right at the top of this, uh, Brian Branch, Detroit Lions. Uh, this is my nightmare. Tell me how it ends. More Lions issues. Uh, so Branch uh, was under concussion protocol. No update on that yet. But you could see when he and Trey McBride went head to head, McBride's been announced to be in concussion protocol. I'd be shocked if Branch isn't as well, which means his uh, abil availability for this coming Sunday is at risk. Now, what's interesting with that is Brandon Joseph right now is the only rather true healthy safety right now at this point in time. But um, uh, uh, Fiatu Melafanwu, <laughs> uh, all these injured players purposely have backups with tough names. I don't know why they're doing this to me. But Melafanwu played really well late last year, but he's been injury prone, has been dealing with an ankle problem. He's missed the first three weeks. I'm hopeful that if Branch can't play, that Melifonwu can play, and he is actually someone I would target to put in my, my starting lineup in place of Branch because of the way he was used last year, and I would see them using him no differently this year if he got in there. The fact they didn't put him on IR at the beginning of the year um, leads me to believe that they expected him not to miss at least four weeks. This is week four, so if Branch is out, pick up Melifonwu and says, put him in your lineup. There we go. Um, all right, let's uh, shift over to Marcus Epps and what's going on with his ACL. So Marcus Epps had a very productive week three with 10 solo tackles. He missed a little bit at the end of the game and turns out he had a torn ACL. Isaiah Polamau, who is actually the cousin of Troy Palamalu, um, who they spell it differently, but they're cousins, um, actually stepped in for him. And um, uh, Palamalu actually played more box snaps than Epps did on a percentage basis. So it'd be real interesting to see how this plays out with Epps out for the full year. Maybe they don't feel like they can play on um, the two safeties with Morig and, and Palomalo deep and have to play a little bit of a different alignment. So he might be someone that's worth stashing uh, Palomalo, that is, on the end of your bench if they move to that more of a box format. And of course, Epps was productive, as I mentioned, in his role with 10 solo tackles this past week. So Palomalo is someone uh, deep leagues I'm looking to, to pick up. There we go. Uh, and finally here for the safety position, uh, Derwin James was suspended for one game. What happened there? Well, Derwin James, unfortunately, has a bad reputation. And that bad reputation is probably deserved as I'm thinking about it because he has so many personal foul type of hits. And there was one more. And so I believe it was John Runyon from the league's office, a former player, actually sent him the letter that said, you are suspended one game for your continued reckless play. So Derwin James will sit out this week. Aloy Gilman was back in week three. So expect Aloy Gilman and Elijah Moden, who they traded for late in training camp, to be your two starters at safety for the Chargers. 
Gotcha. All right. Uh, so that kind of wraps up where we're going through the injuries. There will be some more injury information, but we're going to get into snap counts. So these injuries are going to have implications uh, based off snaps. Um, and right off the off the top, we're talking about the Cleveland Browns. So JOK played 100% of the snaps. Jordan Hicks played 87%. So this looks like a theme that we're going to have in terms of how that's working out this year. Hicks wore the green dot, though, when he was on the field. So um, just know that the Browns with shorts, they've tended to rotate linebackers and all. But at least Hicks is getting 87% of the snaps and not 67% of the snaps. So I'd still be okay leaving him in, um, in, in some of your deep deeper leagues. All right. Well, let's go uh, a little further back into the secondary and talk about the Cleveland Browns safeties. So Juan Thornhill, their free safety, got put on injured reserve. Delpit's been playing more of that strong safety, a little bit more in the box uh, kind of thing, which is great for Delpit, by the way, someone you want, might want to target to pick up if he's available. But in the, the absence of Thornhill, I was truly expecting Rodney McLeod to pick up most of the snaps. And as it turns out, Ronnie Hickman, uh, uh, undrafted free agent out of Ohio State, or maybe he was a seventh rounder, one of the two, but very, you know, very, lo- very low from a draft perspective. Actually played 69% of the snaps, a very nice 69%. And Rodney McLeod played 55%. So not sure I'm targeting either one of those. Um, I think they're going to probably have to continue with that mixture of the two. Gotcha. All right, let's uh, let's move out west to Denver and let's talk some Broncos linebackers. Big upset last week with Broncos pulling off the victory, with which I truly did not expect, and many didn't as well. But congratulations to the Broncos. But at the number two linebacker position, Cody Barton only played 42% of the snaps. And he had only played roughly 60-something percent the previous week. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly. So Cody Barton is someone that possibly can end up on the waiver wires if you if you need that spot. So I'd, I'd, I'd watch for one more week, but if he's in that 40 to 60 percent range again, I would let him go. What was interesting, one other note, is on Tuesday, the Broncos actually worked out Quan Alexander, who actually tore his Achilles last year and has been recovering. He's worked out for a couple of teams, hasn't been signed yet, and the Falcons were one of the teams that worked him out. But Quan Alexander very well could be a replacement for Cody Barton here at some point. Keep an eye on the waiver on, on the transaction wire for that. Gotcha. All right. Let's go south to Florida and talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and uh, their linebackers. So that number two linebacker spot continues to be a rotation between K.J. Britt and Servasia Dennis. That one was a little bit easier to say. And uh, they're both roughly at the 50 percent mark in terms of snap count. Neither one is trustable for putting up IDP points with that kind of snap count. Um, Either leave them on the bench or on the waiver wire. Gotcha. All right. So uh, out west to Arizona and the Cardinals. So at the number two linebacker spot there, Mac Wilson played 87% of the snaps. Now, that is very unusual over the past year plus this year for the Cardinals under Jonathan Gannon, where the number two linebackers played roughly 60, 65% of the snaps. So don't overpay for Wilson. Um on the waiver wire, if you can get him from the cheap and you have room on your bench, but be careful about overpaying in terms of your fab budget and monitor, but boy, don't overspend if you do want to pick him up if you're in a bad situation. There we go. Um, All right, out into LA uh, with the Chargers. Well, we hit on the Chargers earlier when we talked about Junior Colson, but just to confirm, Henley played 100% of the snaps and Perriman played 81% of the snaps. We go. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs. How are we doing there? Okay. Well, from the department of I told you so, even though I don't like to tell you I told you so, but I did tell you so. Um, Leo Chanel in week one had some outstanding stats, but he had only played 60% of the snaps. He's the number three linebacker in Kansas City. I warned everybody, folks, be careful, be careful. And of course, here in week three, he only played 23% of the snaps. Nick Bolton didn't play his usual 100% of the snaps or roughly that because he got injured during the game. So keep an eye out for that. He did come back in the game. He did get interviewed after the game because he made a big play. Everything seems to be fine. Just make sure that he is in the lineup. But Chanel, if you picked him up, sorry, I'd say you can let him go and and move on from there. Gotcha. All right. 
you know what? Uh, rip the Band-Aid off. What's going on with Detroit? I feel bad for your Lions because they certainly have a lot of injuries. And Alex Anzalone missed week three with the concussion. Derek Barnes on Tuesday got put on injured reserve with a knee injury. And what was interesting is Derek Barnes had the second most snaps of the for the linebackers to that point for the full year. So even ahead of Jack Campbell, Barnes was, quote, Talk, talked about his breaking out during the preseason. Not sure most people bought into that talk. And so, and people were thinking Anzalone and Jack Campbell. Well, it was Anzalone and Barnes. Now, when Barnes went out, Campbell, uh, Cam- and with Anzalone out, Campbell did play 100% of the snaps, but he was not very productive at all. If you look at his stat line, I believe it was four tackles, if I remember correctly. Hopefully that's an anomaly. Anzalone, there's a good chance that he will be back here in week four. So I'm expecting Anzalone and Campbell, but not Campbell at 100%. Watch Malcolm Rodriguez to be um, sprinkled in as, as well. No relation, and he has a Z at the end of his name. So, uh, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. But Staying away from Campbell, staying away from Rodriguez, and I'd play Anzalone if he if he is active. Gotcha. Okay, let's go a little south to in the Indian Indianapolis with the Colts. Uh, what's up there? Their offense sucks. Their offense is only averaging about 50 plays per game when the average is 64, 65, somewhere in that range for offenses. You know what that means when your offense isn't on the field? Your defense is on the field. And what does that do for IDP? Creates a lot of tackling opportunities. So Zaire Franklin and EJ Speed are are, are getting, they played 90 snaps this past week. So if you think about, you know, 60, that's just round 65 being a full game. That's almost another quarter of a game or so that they're playing. So they're just stacking up stats. So I don't, based on watching Richardson and his inaccuracies and all, I don't know if this is going to improve during the year. So if I'm going to make, if I'm targeting trades and needing a linebacker, I'm looking at Franklin, I'm looking at speed. You may have to pay a little bit high, but it's probably going to be worth it because of uh, the coach situation. Gotcha. Oh, and one other thing on the coach safeties. We talked in week one, Julian Blackman playing the strong safety in, the, in this Gus, Gus Bradley defense and Nick Cross playing the free safety. Their run, their run defense has been so bad. Um, Franklin and Speed are getting a lot of tackles, but a lot of stuff is even getting past them to the safeties. Nick Cross has gotten a ton of tackles. Blackman missed week two, but had a, a good solid game in week three. But Cross and Blackman switched positions. Cross moved to more of the strong safety in week three, and Blackman moved to the free safety. Now, if I'd have known that would have happened when Cross was sitting out on several of my waiver wires, I'd have picked him up, but I just thought it was an anomaly. But between all the time that they're spending on the field, along with that switch from free to strong, strong safety, if that continues for Cross, he's going to be someone to pick up another potential trade target. Gotcha. There we go. Uh, let's move to the Big Apple with uh, the New York Jets. So with the Jets, Jamie and Sherwood sat in for CJ Mosley, who had a toe injury. Sherwood played 30, uh, excuse me, 98% of the snaps. And Mosley is expected back in week four, which means Sherwood would turn to the bench or he plays a Sam where he played like 20 or 30% of the snaps. So if you, you know, uh, and Sherwood was surprisingly not as productive as he has been in when he's had limited snaps um, in, in place of Mosley in the past, late in games, or whatever. So Mosley will be back, but Mosley's around 35 folks. So Sherwood, if someone drops him because Mosley's back and they used him for a week, stash him. I just don't see Mosley making it through the full year. Gotcha. Let's talk Green Bay. Uh, what's going on with those linebackers? Well, the good news is Quay Walker played 100% of the snaps, which is great for Quay Walker. Isaiah McDuffie did not play but 79% of the snaps. So from a trend perspective, 97, 88 of the snaps over the first three weeks from McDuffie. Edron Cooper is now up to 33% of the snaps in week three. Talked about this in week one. Watch out over time. McDuffie's snaps coming down, Cooper going up, and we're starting to see that. So you got even though McDuffie was extremely productive this past week, someone that you're looking to trade at this point in time, uh, because I just see that snap count continue to decrease. Cooper's just too talented to keep off the field for as the year progresses. Gotcha. All right, let's uh, move to Carolina, and uh, we'll talk about their linebackers and then get into their safeties. 
Well, a big change for the uh, for the Panthers this past week. One is they actually like look like a real NFL football team, which was great. I'm glad the Saints played them in week one when Bryce Young was still quarterbacking, which was awesome to get that victory like that. But now back to the defensive side of things, though. Shaq Thompson played 100% of the snaps. Josie Jewell, who had been playing 100% of the snaps as well, did not. Jewell only played a very nice 69% of the snaps again. And Trevin Wallace, the rookie third rounder, played 17% of the snaps. So not sure what's happened there. If they were unhappy with Jewell's productivity, there, hasn't been, uh, there haven't been any reports of any injuries with Jewell. But it's something I am not putting Jewel into my lineup in week four based on that. Now, a lot of some of the sitting out stuff happened in the fourth quarter. That's why I'm wondering if there's some sort of injury that wasn't reported. But even with that, I'm not putting him in my lineup uh, given that he played 69% of the snaps week three. Gotcha. And what about the safeties? On the safety front, some bad news for Jordan Fuller. Jordan Fuller on Tuesday got put on injured reserve and Nick Scott uh, got put in. So I didn't get to watch much of the game. And I, I, so when I saw the snap count, I saw that Fuller played 53%, and Nick Scott played 56%. So I started doing some digging, saw that uh, Fuller was hurt, and it's bad enough that he got put on IR. So Nick Scott is someone to target, and he's not the best safety in the world, but he'll get the playing time, which gives him an opportunity to get some IDP stats for you. Cool. Uh, let's move into the Northeast uh, with the New England Patriots. So Jelani Tavai played 100% of the snaps at the mic position, which Jawan Bentley was playing, but Jawan Bentley did go on IR from the, from the injury that he had. So Tavai moved from his will role to the mic role and, and, and took on where Bentley was. Braquan McMillan played 73% of the snaps in Tavai's old position. He also unfortunately did uh, pretty terrible based on PFF scores as a side note. But They don't really have much else right now. Tavai was not really nearly as good as Bentley was in that mic position, but he is playing the mic position. He is playing 100% of the snaps. He did wear the green dot in week three, whereas Kyle Duggar, the safety ward in week two. All something to keep an eye on. I'd put Tavai in my lineup in week four, but I'd also be careful about uh, being overly reliant on that and thinking you have something for the full year. Just might not pan out that way. Gotcha. Uh, Let's move to uh, Pennsylvania, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Boy, lots of lots of disappointment going on in the linebackers for the Steelers. Patrick Queen had, I believe, six tackles in week three, which I believe matched what he had the first two weeks combined, which is just not very good. Not sure what's happening where I haven't been able to study yet in terms of what's why he's not being able to put up the IDP stats that he did last year with the Ravens. Also disappointed with the Steelers is Landon Roberts and Peyton Wilson because Roberts played like 46% of the snaps this past week, Peyton Wilson 43%. You can't play either one of those two with that kind of snap count. We can hope that, um, well, I hate to say it this way, we'd never want anybody to be hurt, but let's, let's do it this way. Roberts has typically gotten hurt, similar to Denzel Perriman. Both of them have injury-prone histories, and if that were to happen, Maybe that shoots Peyton Wilson up to the 80% range of snaps, and maybe he's more valuable as the year progresses. But right now, I don't know if I could put Queen into my lineup. And the other two, I don't even know if I can keep on my bench, other than unless I'm stashing Peyton Wilson for later in the year and assuming Roberts does get hurt. Gotcha. So let's move uh, southeast to Baltimore and the Ravens. Speaking of disappointment, so we had the whole Malik Harrison, Trent Simpson, who's starting and playing the most in week one, and there was back and forth. Week two, Trent Simpson bumped up to the 75, 80% range, somewhere around there. And then here we go in week three, and Trent Simpson's down to 51% of the snap count, and Malik Harrison is at 8%. So it looks like Trent Simpson has put himself as the number two inside linebacker for the Ravens, but not playing enough at this point in time to put him into the lineups. There's just something not right there. And we see Eddie Jackson, the old free agent safety from the Bears, whom the Ravens signed in free agency, getting about 50% of the snaps as a number three safety. Something to keep an eye on. Maybe Simpson, the light bulb comes on a little bit more and they play him more over time, but I would not be putting Simpson in my lineup right now. All right. Let's talk uh, Las Vegas Raiders. So Robert Spillane, once again, played 100% of the snaps. Divine Diablo was ruled out before the game, so he didn't play. 
Luke Masterson played 70% of the snaps. He's not exactly a stellar athlete. He's a solid, smart player kind of thing. But, you know, if you're desperate, deep leagues, you can play Masterson. You got to watch for if Diablo's back. He did not go in IR. But beyond that, I'm not really playing Masterson. All right. And the surprise of the South, the uh, New Orleans Saints, uh, how are their linebackers doing? Well, so I just, for my beloved Saints, I just got to take a moment. How did you blow that game on that last drive? Oh, my goodness. Well, the way you blow it is you have two defensive backs running into each other. When they're playing man defense on the third and 16, you're wondering why they're not playing zone and just keeping everything in front of them. But I digress, Dennis Allen. Okay. Yeah. With that being said, Demario Davis, who usually plays about 100% of the snaps, only played 89% of the snaps. And apparently he was also out in that last drive and maybe even the previous drive. I haven't been able to fully get into that second to last drive yet. But so Demario Davis, it was also rumored that he had a hamstring problem, so something to watch for in the injury report. Pete Werner um, played 99% of the snaps, and he's usually in the 80% range. He also picked up the green dot while Demario Davis was out. So what to look for is you could see Pete Werner moving into the mic, Willie Gay moving from the Sam into the Will, because of that he's very capable, as he proved that with the Chiefs. Part of the reason they signed him is because of his position flexibility. So you could see that playing out. So Willie Gay might end up being a sneaky play this week, particularly if he out and he's getting roughly 80% of the snaps. Uh, on the other side of that game, we had the Eagles. And what's going on with their defensive ends? They played a lot of money to Bryce Huff and Vic Fangio, their defensive coordinator, has pretty much been trashing Bryce Huff since the preseason about you got to be able to do more than pass, rush the passer. You got to stop the run. Well, this past week, listen to these snap counts. Josh Sweat played 61%. Brandon Graham, who I think is uh, as, old, as old as my deceased grandfather, uh, played 63% of the snaps. Bryce Huff only played 32% of the snaps, and Nolan Smith, the former first-round pick, played 38% of the snaps. So Huff was fourth among the defensive ends after they gave him that big, fat contract, and they let Hassan Reddick, um, they, when they traded Hassan Reddick to the, to the Jets. So I actually dropped Bryce Huff in one of my leagues. That's one of the reasons I wanted to focus on the Eagles' defensive ends, not because I dropped him, but if you're holding on, Bryce Huff is just not winning in the pass rush. He's not playing very much because of the run defense. His defensive coordinator is not a fan of him. Um, he's someone I can let you can let go. Gotcha. All right. Um, how about Seattle? What's going on with the Seahawks? Well, we talked a little bit about them earlier when Jerome Baker, when we talked about his injury and so forth, and hopefully he will be back this week. If not, I'm staying away from Tyrese Knight and Drake uh, Drake Thomas. Tyrell Dodson had a shoulder injury going into the game. He only played 90% of the snaps, but um, he's someone that uh, is still worth playing for sure. Gotcha. Now uh, let's look in Tennessee at the Titans. Well, the the opportunity to get Ernest Jones is now passed. A uh, very mm -hmm. productive game in week three. He played 100% of the snaps, as did Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray wore the green dot still, though. And so. Um, there was, you know, the concerns about the knee injury, why the Rams trade him. If you if you were able to land Ernest Jones on the cheap, fantastic, congratulations to you for taking advantage of that owner who gave up on him. But um, he, I, both Murray and Jones are worth are both worth playing. And if you're holding out hopes for Jack Gibbons, I think you can wave those goodbye. Gotcha. All right. Um... What about, let's look at Dallas the, and the Cowboys. What's going on there? Well, Eric Kendricks played 100% of the snaps because Dallas somehow got back into that game that they were being blown out of and, and made it relatively close. But this number two linebacker is quite the mess. In week one, it was DeMorian, DeMarvian Overshone who played the higher percent of the snaps. Last week against Saints in week two, it was Damone Clark. We go to week three, and it's Overshone who played 78% of the snaps. Not only did Clark fall from number two to number three, it, it seems like he fell to number four because he played 19% of the snaps, and the rookie, Maris Lufau, played 46% of the snaps. We had to have one more tough name with Lufau to, to, to get us through the show here. So 
I am avoiding putting any of those folks into my lineup. This is a, a sit and watch kind of thing. Mike Zimmer thinks he's so freaking smart. There's a reason he hasn't been a defensive coordinator for a few years in the league. Um, and unfortunately, only Jerry Jones, who likes to wind the clock backwards and brings back Ezekiel Elliott, thinking Ezekiel Elliott can play like he did six years ago. Mike Zimmer can be a defensive coordinator. He thinks like he was maybe six years ago when, when uh, he was good. Not anymore. Stay away from the number two linebacker position for the Cowboys for now, folks. Gotcha. And to wrap it up, uh, let's talk about Jacksonville and the Jaguars. Foye Aluakon, who, if you're like me, many of you may have invested in. Plantar fasciitis is the report that came out that um, why he left the game on Monday night. He only played 42% of the snaps. But even before that, Ryan Nielsen, the defensive coordinator, who I think just likes to troll us, I think he's the Arthur Smith now of defense, um, he had a rotation going with Lua Khan, Devin Lloyd, Chad Muma, and Ventrell Miller. Lloyd played 66% of the snaps. Alua Khan played 42% before he left the game. Muma, uh, Chad Muma, 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 Chuma, Chad Muma, one of, however you pronounce him, he played 42%. Ventral Miller played 44%. So with that kind of rotation going, you can't really play any of these guys. Now, with Alua Khan out of the mix, do I see Lloyd creeping back up probably to the 80% range? Probably. But when they moved him to the Mike linebacker position, like we talked about it, you know, uh, around week one, I had high hopes for Lloyd. But with this rotation situation, very disappointing. I'm stepping back and not playing those Jags unless I'm desperate. And the only one I'm playing is Lloyd. Gotcha. All right. So um, I haven't thrown a random question at Ricky in a little while. Um, and last week I didn't have him. So. Uh, we're now walking into week four and rewind the clock uh, to the first episode. I asked about, you know, how the uh, Lions and the Saints are going to do. And then, you know, do we have some sort of a competition between each other? Well, now here we are uh, three weeks later and our teams are effectively tied uh, at two and one going into this week. Lions with at with Seattle on Monday night football. And then the saints have the Falcons for a one o'clock game. Uh, who comes out the victor, uh, Ricky this week? Um, I, that's a great question, Nathan. So let's go with this way. I think the saints will bounce back against the Falcons. You know, the one thing I'm worried about the saints is they, their death in the offensive line is so bad. And Eric McCoy, their, their, their center who has had all pro recognition in the past. McCoy is, it was announced on Tuesday will be out six to eight weeks. That's a huge, huge loss for the saints. That is the one thing that I'm worried about that could put the Falcons ahead of them. And I do think the lions win as well. Good. Well, that's always great to hear. Um, so we'll be back next week with more IDP advice. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter. Um, I'm at Nate Cheat. Ricky is at RickyRod66. And make sure to follow our main brand account uh, at IDP underscore plus. See you next week. <laughs>